Hi, and welcome to the blending mode class at Hummies World. We are working through the blending modes from top to bottom, and we've gone through all of these, and we're down here to hue, the very last grouping of the blending modes. So uh, if you have not done all of the others, I would recommend going back to the beginning. Um, go to hummiesworld.com and uh, find the blending mode class and start from the beginning. This section is called the component section. And component means uh, a part of something. Uh, so what is the something that these are a part of? Well, let's observe that in the definition of the hue blending mode. It preserves the brightness and saturation of the bottom layer while adopting the hue of the top layer. So we have three components or three parts. We have brightness, saturation, and hue. And if you've taken course one at Hummies World, this is going to be familiar to you. It seems like I'm always telling people, go back and do course one. <laughs> because the fundamentals are all there. And um, there's a class on, uh, there's a lesson on this that goes into great detail, but we're going to look at it really quickly. I'm going to click and bring up the color picker. And um, if you want a more intense uh, lesson, go watch Course One's lesson. Uh, but uh, basically, on the color picker, uh, what we have here is um, from left to right is saturation, and that's one of the components to come up with the colors. From bottom to top, we have darkness to lightness. That's this brightness that it's talking about. And um, on this slider here, we have the rainbow of colors, and that is the hue. The word hue can be interchanged with the word color. And so those are the three parts that we use to make up all the colors, or the three components. Um, and so when we apply the hue blending mode, it's going to preserve the brightness and the saturation. So in other words, how bright up and down, um, how dark or how light, and the saturation, um, how pastel or soft or how bright, uh, not bright, uh, I should say, uh, what is the word? I can't think of the word, um, but a uh, highly saturated image is neon. I guess that, that would be a good word. And uh, while the top layer is, is controlling the hue or the actual color. So we're going to go first to look at uh, this um, graphic as we've done with all of the layouts and we're going to apply the hue blending mode and you see it turns all gray. Well that's because um, we're preserving the hue of the top layer and the top layer doesn't have any hues. There, it's, there's, it's black, it's gray, it's white, it doesn't have any hues, it doesn't have any blues or greens or yellows or whatever. And um, you can see this white is very bright, but the, the black is very dark um, uh, up and down on that uh, color picker, black down here. But this green is going to be somewhere in the middle. So when we apply the hue, it makes sense that it all turns the same color because or the same gray because there's no color in the top layer and that's controlling the hue or the color and um, it's making it the same saturation and brightness as the green which is all one saturation and all one brightness so it all turns the same kind of makes sense huh 
So let's look at uh, how we apply this. I actually do use the hue a lot when I am designing. I use it to change uh, colors sometimes. Um, I, I use it uh, to um, change. I just realized I put the wrong blending mode on that layer. I was looking at that going, that was the last lesson. Um, I use it to change the color, but I use it, I use the hue and the color blending modes depending on which one works best because you remember this hue one is also going to um, uh, not just change the color, but it's also going to change the saturation and the brightness. Anyway, um, that just kind of blew out of the water what I was doing with this last layer. I was trying to bring things all together and that didn't work. Uh, well, that might work. Okay, uh, because with these lessons, <laughs> um, we want you to use the same blending mode and the same texture that I'm giving. I say this every time so that uh, you while we're going through uh, these blending modes, we want to see how everybody applies the same uh, blending mode and uh, and learn from each other's, you know, if you're using the same texture and you're making yourself think outside of the box and using only the one blending mode, then, uh, and you, you share your recipe, share what you do, a screenshot of what your, um, layers palette looks like, we all can learn from that, uh, learn from each other. So anyway, let's go back down to my original image, which is actually way over here because this was taken at a winery and there are some vines over here. Uh, so I um, played with it and took out those shadows, see, before and after. And because I was focusing on the road because of my text. And here's the original text that I put on there. And I actually went ahead and I um, rasterized the text or simplified it if you're in Photoshop Elements. And uh, after I did that, I applied a filter, distort, pinch, and I played with it and uh, applied that to the text. I'm on the wrong layer. But anyway, it made it a little squiggly. That's how I got my text to be a little squiggly. So those are my two text layers. And now let's go ahead and look at the texture that we're giving out. Here's the texture. It's actually got a lot of... Uh, uh, grungy cool stuff that might work well with one of the other blending modes and you'll have an opportunity after we finish these last lessons uh, here let me all the way up on the opacity it's got some stuff grungy circly things around the corner hubby made this texture well I made it in Photoshop but he made the original texture and um, so uh, What's going to happen though with this, this is kind of uh, the reason I picked this one, I, I wanted it to be able to work for most people, is that I had uh, converted this to a sepia tone texture. And so what's going to happen is, as you saw, when we change it to hue, it's going to take on the, the hue or the color of the top layer, and um, then it's going to take on the brightness and the saturation of the bottom layer. So when we do this, basically it just changes everything to the color, uh, to the sepia tone color. It just makes our image sepia tone and you lose almost all of the other um, stuff because the other stuff doesn't matter in the top layer. It only matters what color it is. Um, so now you see I've got a little bit of uh, pinks and things coming through though, but I lowered the opacity of it 
because I thought it was a little too, um, I don't remember where I had it. This was just a little too vibrant in the sky and I wanted it to be uh, much uh, softer uh, so the text stood out. And then I was trying to think of something else to do with the hue and I went ahead and I uh, duplicated the layer, Control J, and um, then I made the selection in the center and um, it, I had the feather up really high from the last time I played with it. Uh, so you just, uh, I'm going to take the feather down this time. And uh, then I hit delete and it control D to deselect. And if I take away my original image, you're going to see uh, that uh, faded nice uh, it's got the hue already applied to it into the background. But um, what I was uh, trying to do was to put something around the edge uh, that um, would kind of bind everything, uh, ground everything. And I had accidentally applied the, <laughs> the exclusion, which we did the, the last time. I do want to note here while I'm doing this. There's a subtract and a divide in the full version. I'm in Photoshop CC here, uh, Creative Cloud. and um, But these two are not in Photoshop Elements and I want to make sure this class is doable by all versions of both programs. So we're not um, doing the subtract and the divide. We're skipping those. But um, yeah, so this is just not working. So if I do normal, uh, then I got that grunginess around the, the edge and I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit because that's just a little too stark. And I think um, right about there. I think this is the image we're going to use. I'm going to get rid of this original one because I like the grungier one better. And so um, I'm not able to use the uh, hue again because actually when you use it, it's just going to keep it the same because it only is about the hue and not the darkness and the saturation. Um, anyway, uh, there's before and after applying the grungy edges of the texture. I think I might drop that down just a little bit more. I don't want it to take away from the image, but I do just want it around the edge. So not super creative, um, but you know, it's uh, great for uh, making those sepia tone images um, and changing anything to um, any color that you want. So I look forward, as always, to seeing what you do with this, and maybe you'll come up with some other creative idea that I didn't think of.